Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to talk about uh, this here uh, Arima like dual 940 board. Now, these things are some sort of server board, I don't know from what exactly, but the major advantage of these is that they can be had for something like uh, 15 euros or thereabouts, if you're in Europe at least. Uh, there are some downsides compared to high-end boards, obviously. Uh, for one, you don't have timings in BIOS. I'm going to show you all of that later. Bit of a BIOS overview, I guess. Uh, you may be able to get uh, custom timings to work by flashing SPD, but I haven't yet tried that. Uh, also, obviously no voltage settings, but it's the, the least of our worries here. Then it has an AMD uh, 8111 chipset. So this is a, I think it usually has AGP as well, but this one is a server board. It only has uh, the big PCI, uh, PCI X slots, not PCI E, PCI X. That's uh, some weird, like 64 bit PCI standard, I think. Uh, then you have regular PCIs. I use PCI video card on here and postcode. Luckily it has two slots, which is nice, but no PCIe like on the Asus K8 NDL. Uh, also, basically no BIOS settings. All the overclocking I'm going to show you will be in OS. I actually tried to do some hard mod overclocking on this. This is our clock chain on here. Uh, ICS 950.04.02. Uh, now, supposedly, well, not supposedly, I know that these work, these uh, frequency settings. You can, you have frequency select pins here on this chip, like this. Uh, some pointy thing. Uh, this, this, there's one down here. There's one over here somewhere. Uh, can't, oh no, it's here, it's here. So that they, you have uh, frequency select pins and in theory, and I had success with this on other motherboards, um, you can basically hard mod your, your clock gen to run at the right frequency. Now, the only one that worked for me, other than the 200, was the 202, which is kind of pointless. I tried to get the 210 working, uh, I even tried... Um, raising what I think might have been chipset voltage. Again, I, I don't have any schematics or anything for this board, so that, that was just a guess. I raised some rail that was 1.2 volts to 1.4, and uh, I think one of these here, uh, MOSFETs here. So maybe I did something wrong, I'm not entirely sure as of now, but personally, uh, the 210 setting got stuck at, I think, 49 postcode, and everything above that was would just zero, 00. But I, I know that they applied because it also changes, as you can see here, the PCI clock. Uh, I have a, a little device for that. Let me find it. A little device that measures PCI clock. This, this thing is amazing if you hard mod boards, for example, like this. So I, I modded it to the 210 and to be sure that I was running actually 210, I had this, this one in the bottom slot and it said 35. And as you can see, the only frequency setting where we have 35 is uh, my 210 here. I also tried running a 233 as the next step and when I did that my pull down uh, resistor for FS1 wasn't sufficient and instead it ran well it was pulled high still so it tried to run 300 and thanks to uh, PCI clock monitoring I saw 37.5 uh, and I immediately knew that something wasn't quite right. Anyways, this is not really relevant unless you want to try it yourself and maybe you can get it working. Personally, I had no luck with this. Uh, 
it, it's definitely not like a, a frequency limit of the CPU or anything. Uh, in OS, I was managed. I managed to get over 260 to work. So going by that standard and even like 250 stable, uh, 240 should work. 233 should work. Uh, 210 should work. Maybe even 266 should post, but uh, I think it applies something in in a wrong way. Even though in in theory the the FS pins only should change uh, the CPU, HT, and PCI, and and leave the other uh, clocks generated by this this little PLL here alone. So I, I'm not sure why that is. If the there is some uh, like memory training or or uh, hyper transport, I don't know, initialization issues. I'm, I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, that's that's that for the uh, clock gen thing. Now, memory, uh, not memory, um, I didn't do memory vault mode because I don't need it with the, like without being able to set manual timings. The sticks here I have, uh, they will do like over 250 is super easy at stock volts with uh, the C2.5, the board set, so I don't really care. Uh, CPU volt mod, here I'm going to do a like close up after afterwards. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, so far no over voltage protection issues, but I only ran like 1.42 or 1.43 volts on ambient so far on this. Just for testing basically. Now, what I kind of find hilarious is the VRM of this thing. It has, I would say, a, a really, really good VRM for a 940 board. Uh, if you put some, some heat sinks over these fats, you can guarantee that you can push more, more uh, amps into your CPU than it will ever need. Uh, even without, those get barely warm. They are really nice fats. Also, old polymer caps, four-phase VRM, massively overkill for my, in my opinion. Uh, memory has its own own VRMs. Uh, again, maybe I'm going to do a volt mode of that if I feel like it. There is uh, our second uh, V-core controller for the second CPU. This one is going to be a bit annoying to put uh, heat sinks on here, but I'm going to try because they squeezed in uh, input filtering MLCCs in between here, if you can see that. Uh, so you've got to cut up the, uh, the heatsink or cut slots in it or something. Uh, I, I will figure something out, I guess. Uh, anyways, let's, let's move on to the bench and, and like give you a bit of a BIOS overview. Uh, also, one more note, I, I already, already peeled off the BIOS sticker on mine because I extracted the BIOS image on here and well, I tried to open it in, in Phoenix BIOS editor and uh, it failed again. There is, for some reason, most BIOS editors just hate me. Uh, I even tried it on a native Windows XP machine. Because on Windows 10 the, the BIOS editor doesn't even start, but, but on the Windows uh, XP machine it uh, didn't work properly either. Well, it loaded the BIOS, but it didn't... Uh, Basically, as soon as I clicked on, on, on chipset settings in the, the BIOS overview, it said something about uh, invalid runtime error or some bullshit. Uh, kind of hate BIOS editors, to be honest. Anyways, uh, move over to the bench and let me show you how this looks in BIOS and what we can do in OS and how the overclocking works. Okay, here we are. Now there is a really interesting feature. This board has a reset button up here and power button down here. It's almost like it's supposed to be an overclocking board. But it doesn't overclock. So let's start this. Oh, and one more thing I should mention, it doesn't have any SATA. And come on, go into BIOS. BIOS is F2. Seems to be an enterprise thing. Uh, usually I would use a SATA to PCI, uh, not SATA to PCI, IDE to SATA converter, but I ran out of uh, SSDs that are big enough for Windows 7, and this board absolutely hates XP. I tried like three different install disks and 
a couple of pre-made images and none of them would work properly. So I ended up using Windows 7, but I only have these 16 gigabyte SSDs left. And that is a bit too small for Windows 7. Anyways, BIOS, we have absolutely nothing basically. We can uh, set our um, HT speed here. So for my FS, uh, FSB attempt, I, I set it to 600. And you can set your memory clock. I set it to 333, so we have more uh, headroom basically. But that's about it for, for any overclocking options in here. You can, uh, in PCI configuration, disable the annoying onboard LAN, which is good, because it takes ages to boot. Uh, let me show you chipset actually, that was what I was trying to like see if I find uh, hidden BIOS options or anything I could enable, but there is absolutely nothing in here. So no timings for me. Anyways, let's exit this and boot it. No, resolution is going to be pretty bad because I'm on a GeForce FX 5200. I still have to get a, a PCI GPU that's compatible with Windows 7 because so far I only have this. This is my most modern PCI GPU. Should probably get something like uh, HD 5450 or something if you want to like bench more modern stuff on this, like Cinebench. Especially Cinebench because you need a lot of screen real estate so you can show all the CPUs. Come on, boot. That's just really annoying that we are on a like normal hard drive now. No SSD takes ages. I think there might be a version with SATA of this board as well. So if you have that one, count yourself lucky. You have less pain with uh, selecting a drive. Come on, why is it not doing anything? Now, unfortunately ZFSB doesn't work here, but I'm going to show you which tool works. We have old school stuff called CPU Cool. It's amazing for like usually older stuff than this, but uh, the clock gen on here is pretty primitive to be honest, so this is perfect. Let's go into configure, CPU clock. Okay, now again, uh, clock chain is a, I think 950402, we don't have it, but the 0403 works perfectly fine. Now, get frequency or set frequency don't work, however, the fine tuning option works perfectly fine. Let's go in here, and here. There we are, you can see, 200, let me zoom in a bit, uh, let's go plus 60, oh screw off, then frequency set, okay, and we have 204 now. So, I'm going to do this all the way up to, I don't know, 260 or something again maybe let's see does it like bigger steps ah just fine something like this should have no stability issues at all which kind of surprised me because well AMD chipset AMD 81111 it is kind of meh. Also memory, those are the timings we are stuck at. So for the memory I have in here this is like piece of cake. All the way up to way over 250. 
that uh, I think CF6 or CF5 rather, uh, Kimondo stuff again, usual, I showed in the last video as well. Uh, works perfectly fine. Anyways, I will now do a usual volt mod thing on the computer because that's pretty much the only mod I think you really need on this uh, is CPU vCore on, on CPU 1 and CPU 2. So, be right back. Okay, here we are. Now let's start with CPU 1 because this is the one you would run if you're running single CPU on this board, like I did for the Valid. Uh, you have, this is your most convenient way, now this is zero on bridge, you can in theory just use the other side as well. Uh, feedback pin would be the second from the bottom here, I think that's a pin, so that would be feedback on the chip itself. Uh, from there, usual bear resistor to ground, there we go. Now. Value, I would say uh, about 50 to 100, uh, not ohms, kilo ohms here, kilo ohms. There we are. Uh, don't don't get too irritated by the stock resistance. It's uh, 26 kilo ohms. So by the the rough formula uh, of like use 10 times the resistance to start off with, you would have to use something like. Uh, 250 kilo ohms, but uh, it doesn't seem to be linear, and my uh, very resistor has to be set to 5 kilo ohms to run uh, 1.41 or 1.42 volts on the CPU. So that is, I think, the best option. Maybe you can get away with 20 if you don't need, like, don't want low voltages, anyways. Uh, for for grounding, there is not much here in the area, but like if you do it like I did, you can use the screw hole. I just ran the, the wire uh, like through the VRM basically and across the like past the memory slots and use the screw hole up there. Uh, for monitoring on this whole board, uh, basically rule of thumb, one of these 2.5 volt uh, 1500 microfarad caps, uh, I think all of them are on vCore, so just use the positive side of one of those for each CPU and you're fine. I, I use this one here, for example, on mine. Now let's move on to CPU 2. Same voltage controller. This is our feedback pin, also present here. Also zero ohm bridge, so also other side possible. Let's put the variable resistor here. Same deal. There we are. A resistor to ground, same values, uh, 50 to 100 kilo ohms, 50 to 100 kilo ohms. Uh, ground, easy, just use a screw hole, I guess, or I'm, I'm not sure if these, these good looking pads here are all grounds or they're just something else. So, uh, measure those yourself, monitoring. Same deal, use one of the 1500 microfarad caps or just measure from this choke until you find the, like the positive side of a capacitor where you have zero ohms, so that's your V-core then. Uh, yeah, that's basically it for this board. I hope this was somewhat helpful and maybe you want to give it a try. These boards can be had super cheap, so I don't think it's much, much ways to get one. Also come with CPUs, so easy. Anyways, bye.